let's make no bones about this, it's utterly despicable and reprehensible that this protest was going ahead on Armistice Day. It's, a, it's, a, it's insulting to Britain. It's a slap in the face to those veterans who fought yeah. for the very freedoms that are being yes. used and abused to undermine yeah. our culture and our civilization. I think you can respect Remembrance Day while also marching for a cause which they're not so far apart. If we look at Armistice, what does it actually mean? Ceasefire. A ceasefire, and that's what people, the majority of them marching want. If you or I, Julia, or anyone else was to go onto the streets and call for the murder of any minority group, we would be arrested, we would be um, fined, we would be charged, we would be, we'd be bundled into the back of a police van. This is classic Rishi Sunak drift. Mm. This is the government. If only he had taken the decision a couple of weeks ago when it became clear that these Saturday protests yeah. were not going away. Right. All it needed was Rishi Sunak to take that decision and to announce it. None of this nonsense from Suella Braverman right. about hate, hate marches. No. If only he could have just got control yeah. and said no. We still don't seem to have a, a solution to what is clearly going to be a problem. Let's make no bones about this. It's utterly despicable and reprehensible that this protest, which is in part organised, let's remember, by Hamas supporters yeah, of course it is. and activists, yeah. is going ahead on Armistice Day. It's, a, it's, a, it's insulting to Britain. It's a slap in the face to those veterans who fought yeah. for the very freedoms that are being yes. used and abused to undermine yeah. our culture and our civilization. But I'm actually a free speech fundamentalist. Yes. And I equally support the rights of those who are concerned about Islamic liberalism to go on a protest carrying pictures of Muhammad and potentially even burning the Quran if they choose to do so. Yeah. And if I support that right, I have to support the right of protest so long as they are policed effectively mm. and strongly. And also, there should be a ban on anything in central London. This yes. is the key thing. Well, the current march of... route is from Hyde Park yeah. to from Marble Arch down to Hyde Park Corner. That's within an easy walk of the Cenotaph. Yeah. And there are easily going to be splinter groups that will go there. Right. Now, if you're going to, you can easily put a ban in place for around a two hour walk zone around mm. the Cenotaph. And if people are more than two hours away, then I think that can pass peacefully. You can. As long as it happens later in the day. The thing is, the protesters are gathering at around 11 a.m. because mm. the march starts at 12 p.m. Yeah. Now you're going to have thousands of people in Hyde Park when we should all be standing in silence. Yes. For the, for the, and they won't be, and they won't be, they won't be, they won't be using the silence for anything other than shouting. I'm sure that that's what they'll do because they'll see it as an opportunity. And you know, I accept that some people like yourself are free speech fundamentalists, but in the end, what, what these people are doing, as I said uh, in in my little speech there, uh, is that they're using our kind of tolerance and they're using our, our good nature, if you like, um, to basically. Uh, take the mickey out of it and to say, well, we don't really care. Uh, you give us the right to do this and we're going to do it. Then, mate, I'm actually uh, against banning this proposed march on Armistice Day on Saturday and indeed Sunday. Uh, reluctantly, I think this march should be allowed. What do you think? No, I agree. I'm really happy that you've actually said that because if we support and like these rights that you say that are often or all the time not in these countries that many people, you know, that are marching for, then we can't pick and choose when we want freedom of expression Absolutely. and freedom of speech. Cool, However, that. I hate how the conversation has gone extreme different ways. I don't see why we can't have nuance. Um, I've spoken to some people that are going to be helping to organise the uh, protest or march, and they've said there's been a lot of false news on Twitter, on various platforms. We absolutely want to respect uh, the moments of silence. We do not want to disrupt Remembrance Day. Many people from various backgrounds fought in that war. So what's going to happen is it's not going to be directly near the centre path. So um, centre path. So that's why I don't see there to be an issue. I think you can respect Remembrance Day while also marching for a cause which they're not so far apart. If we look at Armitage, what does it actually mean? Ceasefire. A ceasefire. And that's what people, the majority of them marching want. Yes, there's going to be idiots and fractions that are extreme or like Hamas, but the majority of the people just want to see a stop to war, a stop to killing children. What do you make of the decision of the Met Police to allow this march to go ahead? The Metropolitan Police is meant to protect the British public. And what happens time after time, whether it's Extinction Rebellion end time eco-cult lunatics or Hamas on the streets of the UK, the Metropolitan Police seem to let them get away with it. 
I mean, you know, we just had one of our great national treasures, the Rokeby Venus of Velazquez in the National Gallery, once again attacked, this time by two young maniacs with hammers yeah. who smashed into this unbelievably important masterpiece with hammers. And, you know, they get away with it. They, they almost certainly yeah. to get away with it because the last couple of people who did that ended up at getting a 500 quid fine for gluing themselves to a Van Gogh. This is a very shorthand example of what's happening in the UK at the moment. There's this weird standard on policing, and absolutely the Home Secretary is right to call it out. If, if, if you or I, Julia, or anyone else was to go onto the streets and call for the murder of any minority group, we would be arrested, we would be um, fined, we would be charged, we would be, we'd be bundled into the back of a police van. Well, as it happens, it wouldn't have occurred to either of us to do so. But why is it that week after week there are people on the streets of Britain calling for jihad? There are, and there's, I, I send these out online all the time. There's sermon after sermon at mosque after mosque across the UK calling for jihad in the UK, calling for the extermination of the Jewish state, calling for the downfall of Britain. None of these people get their collars felt by the Met or, the, or, or, or any of the other police forces. Why is it that when people on the streets of London call for jihad, that we end up with the Metropolitan Police issuing a statement saying that their crack Quran interpretation squads at Central Met HQ have come up with the brilliant idea that saying jihad means a lot of different things, according to them. According to Inspector Plod, um, a big bearded fella shouting, jihad, jihad, slay the infidels on the streets of London, uh, it no, could be uh, saying that he's about to have an inner spiritual struggle with the precise nature of the deity. <laughs> I mean, come you, on. This is, Met this Police. is the mad come territory on. we are in. Uh, we're joined now by Conservative MP uh, Tobias Elwood, former chair of the Defence Select Committee. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Tobias. Thanks for joining us. I mean, a first straight good question. F first straight question to you. Where do you stand on this march planned for Saturday, Armistice Day? Uh, should the protesters be allowed to march down past the seven and a half in Whitehall? No, not not at all. This is a very special day for the United Kingdom. And anybody familiar with our history uh, and what we do recognises that this is the moment that the nation pauses to reflect on past service, on past sacrifice, and therefore those who have served to defend our way of life, our freedoms, and indeed the right to demonstrate as well. But the right to demonstrate comes with a sense of responsibility as well. Just try to overshadow uh, the nation when it comes together in every corner of uh, the country, every village, every town, every city, and indeed the capital city as well, um, really is to show disrespect. And indeed, as the Prime Minister says, is an act of provocation. And uh, I really do invite the organisers to recognise how uh, disrespectful this is, how it actually takes away from their own agenda as well. They may believe that somehow that uh, a demonstration can take place peacefully, necessarily, away from Westminster. But 10,000 people, they can't control everybody that's there. And as you were touching on a little bit earlier, there are elements inside those numbers that will deliberately be designed to ratchet things up, to move things into a more violent space. So there is time before the weekend to reconsider and reflect on just how important this weekend is to the British people, to listen, not just to the politicians and so forth, but indeed to those in the veterans community, and indeed, I think, to most Britons, to say, please, let's respect our weekend. By all means, do your demonstrations, but keep the two separate. We've been talking about little else, really, on uh, Talk TV over the last couple of days. Armistice weekend, you know, I'm assuming, um, not, I shouldn't ever assume your view, but I'm assuming that, like me, you think it would be incredibly unwise for these protests to go ahead. Uh, so far, the police have just said, we'd like to ask you to reconsider. Um, a lot of MPs saying they should be banned. What do you think? Mike, we have one weekend in this country mm. that is dedicated. It's not a surprise that November the 11th is coming up. We've right. known about this. Everybody's known about this. Yeah. The government knew about this. We have one weekend that is dedicated, that is sacred, to the memory, to the commemoration, to the celebration of the armistice, but to the commemoration of people who gave their lives, my father, mm. your father, grandfather, whatever, in, in the war. And this is classic Rishi Sunak drift. Mm. This is the government. If only he had taken the decision a couple of weeks ago when it became clear that these Saturday protests yeah. were not going away, right. that they were 
very, very controversial, very distressing mm. and very threatening for and many Jews. And very divisive as well. Very divisive and very threatening for many Jews in London and many people in London. If he had taken the decision then, it's not about banning anybody. Mm. It's about saying, not this weekend. Yes. You are not permitted to go into central London this weekend. Operationally, our police force, whatever it is, the Met Police can't cope with, you know, basic crime, mm. let alone dealing with these protests and dealing with keeping the capital city safe. It's just all it needed was Rishi Sunak to take that decision and to announce it. None of this nonsense from Suella Braverman right. about hate, hate marches and that. If only he could have just got control yeah. and said no. The Armistice Day in Remembrance is absolutely sacrosanct. Uh, this is not just another date in the calendar. The Cenotaph is not just another place in the UK. Uh, this means immense uh, amounts to people who have served, uh, to veterans, to those who continue to serve, and frankly, just to ordinary members of the UK who are proud of their country and want to mark its sacrifices in a proud and respectful way. So anything that compromises the respectful, uh, sombre nature of remembrance ought not to be tolerated. And that's the principle we have to put first and foremost. What does not tolerated mean? Does that mean it should be banned or does it mean that you know, people should... I mean, we just had a caller on who's saying, look, he's going to go down and try and be one of those to protect the Senate off. They are people genuinely fear that it's going to be desecrated. So you make a very good point there, and that is exactly at the heart of the issue that the police have to deal with. There is uh, absolutely no question that any violence, anything that mars remembrance, any anti-Semitic uh, behaviour is absolutely unacceptable. The but police have to apply a test whether there is a likelihood of there being a serious risk of violence. They have access to intelligence. Uh, they can see the way that some things have happened in the past. There have clearly been a number of instances that have caused concern, and they have to make sure that they carry that out with the most utmost seriousness, okay. given so, the seriousness so apologies. and significance. I'm not, I'm not clear. Yes or they... no? Yes or no? Should the march go ahead? Should Sorry, the police, whether should it should the police be banned? Ban it? So, as to whether it should be banned, um, that's a slightly different question, because clearly in a free society, you have to have a balance between the right to protest and, where does and, the everyone, else's right to, uh, and everyone else's right to mark something in a sombre uh, and serious way. So I don't think it should be happening. I don't think it's right that it takes place this weekend. I don't think it should be taking place uh, on Armistice Day. There is clearly far too much potential for people to be uh, okay, upset. So you don't think uh, it should be tolerated? You don't think it should take place? Does that mean you think that the Met Police should ban the march or that the marchers well, themselves should call it off? Well, the marchers themselves should call it off uh, is my and personal if they don't? view on uh, as, uh, as, as from a defence select committee perspective, that's just my personal view. But I think they should be calling it off. Clearly, the risk uh, of, of offence being caused is too great. As to whether it should be banned, the assessment has to be made as to whether there, are, there is likelihood of, being, of there being serious violence or not. If there is any likelihood of such serious violence, clearly, uh, then it should be uh, it should be banned. But if the police are satisfied that it can be moved well away from the cenotaph, that it doesn't take place at the same time that there is no danger of the two things being conflated. So there's no danger of marking armistice being conflated with protests mm -hmm. or being, and there's no danger of any violence, no danger of any anti-Semitic behaviour, which is utterly, utterly unacceptable. Then that's a different question. The police have to take that decision. You can't have politicians telling the police what to do, obviously in a free society, but quite rightly, the prime minister said he'll be holding them to account for the decisions mm. they make, because this is clearly a very serious and sensitive moment. Do you think that protests for the pro-Palestine movement should be allowed to take place in central London on Armistice Day? Absolutely not. It's disrespectful to the uh, dead that lost their lives in the wars and uh, they should not come near the cenotaph at all. Armistice Day is for the Grateful Dead and um, all the ex-soldiers who lost their lives in the World War for us. And I think it's completely disrespectful if they do take part. They've got to respect our culture and we'll respect them first. But at the moment, again, in no respect. Why, why do you feel so passionately about it? Is it because of the significance of the day or is it because you've picked a side in the conflict that's happening in the Middle East? Well, it's the significance of the day. It's not to do with the Middle East, I don't think. It's the significance of the day for the English and the people who fought around the Commonwealth in the World Wars. What about people that say we have a right to 
hold a protest, those are rights that are enshrined, and not allowing a protest on that day would be stripping people of those rights. Well, that's what I said. They can hold the protest somewhere else, just not near the cenotaph. So, Ian, you mentioned mm. briefly there the planned protests this weekend over Armistice this weekend. Um, and the Home Secretary, your Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, saying over the past couple of days that these are hate marches, whereas protesters would argue that, yes, whilst there are certain people within the crowd, they are in a minority, the people who are speaking with hateful language. Overwhelmingly, these are supposed to be peaceful protests calling for a ceasefire. How responsible is the Home Secretary for any violence that might potentially erupt over the course of the weekend because of that kind of inflammatory language that she's using in the media? Well, I don't think she was inflammatory. I, I understand what she felt. And the answer is that in these marches, there have been Hamas flags waved, jihad cries. Uh, and let's be very clear about the, uh, the, the, the sort of chant from the river to the sea. It is not some gentle idea about freedom for Palestine. It is, in fact, a very clear, and it's been made clear, by the way, the head of Hezbollah, Hezbollah a few days ago made it very clear that the purpose of Hezbollah and of Hamas and what that chant is all about is to eradicate the Jews in Palestine and Israel. So the reality here is that all that stuff that's going on on the streets is hateful, is all about intimidating uh, the British public, particularly those who are Jewish. And I have a Jewish sister-in-law, and she said to me she's never felt more threatened in her life living in the capital, but even living in England. And I think, therefore, the key problem here is trying to make sure that we eradicate that. And it's up to the those organisers not to just go on blithely by and say, well, of course, it's not the march because it's just a few people. Those few people become the march because that's what people remember. That's what people fear. And it should be intolerable that that should take case. And I personally believe uh, that the police have plenty of evidence now uh, that if these marches take place during what is an incredibly important period, that weekend of laying of wreaths, remembering peacefully and calmly uh, many of those who never came back. I was a soldier myself. There are many that I want to remember in the course of that. And I simply say to them, they have no right to march to try and create trouble. I think what Suella Bravna has done is so irresponsible. The, this march, Personally, I don't think it should be banned because you shouldn't ban something just because you find it unpalatable and just because you don't approve of it. But if the police were saying the march could be done safely, then personally, I was willing to believe the police were able to control it. I think their chances of controlling it now that I think she has stoked up a real culture war on this issue and she is encouraging by what she's saying some unsavoury types who are saying they're going to come down to London and they are going to... And I'm talking about far-right groups here. I'm not oh, talking about... Of course about... you are. Yeah, no, of no. course you are. What about all the pro-Hamas lot? I mean, that's what this march is about, isn't it? For a, they are not pro You cannot say that the majority of the people on that march are going well, to be pro-Hamas. So, OK, so let's say... Let's to take Douglas Murray's point, then. Um, if there was a march which was... The organisation of which was linked to let's say, the BNP, and yet there were some people going along who were not BNP supporters. Would you say that was a good judgment on their part? If the organisers were primarily linked to those groups... Are you saying that, that the organisers of these marches are primarily we, linked to I think Hamas? We, I think we know that several of the organisers and the key organisation groups are linked. We know that. We've seen we that. Really, we don't know that the primary organisers, the who official organisers... Who are they? Who are they? The pro-Palestinian movements that we've that have been all over the, all over the telly talking there about. There are quite clear links between the key, the ringleaders of this which ones and the uh, the pro-Hamas <clears throat> movement. We know that, and we know that this whole event is going to attract an awful lot of very very unsavoury behaviour. I find it extraordinary that there is so much fuss about Suella Braverman's article. What about it is so offensive to so people? So you do want the march to be banned? Oh, 100%. I think it is quite demonstrably going to cause massive well, problems. Well, it is now. It's, no, after oh, so Braverman's now it's very convenient because it's now all Suella Braverman's fault. Well, do you think it was going to cause problems this march before... Um people like Tommy Robinson were suggesting or entice people to go down there and, and defend the cenotaph, yeah. even, even though the march is not I going to the cenotaph? I think that's a massive problem that Tommy yeah. Robinson's saying that. I also think it's a massive problem 
that there are all sorts of other fringe organisations and pro, nutters. The pro -Palestine they don't even have to be pro-Palestine. There's a bunch of people who now just want an interesting afternoon out I think they're causing they're trouble. But I exactly. think there are some interesting things about the march in the sense that, look, I would prefer it not to take place, but I also take the view that one of the great things about this country is having the opportunity to uh, protest freely and to have freedom of speech. And there are a lot of things about that organisation that I don't like, and I certainly agree with you, Isabel. I think there are a vast tract of it that even, for example, if you're calling for a ceasefire, then it means that you don't understand Hamas and who they are, and that so many people will not even admit, certainly those I who would are pro-Palestine, would not admit that Hamas is a terrorist organisation. So I think we need to get that clear. But also, if you look at what um, police are saying, and I think that we should listen to people who have either been in the police and have left because they're fed up, they talk about operational independence from political control. Yeah. They say that that has been um, eroded, by this government. They say that that is divisive in terms of how we solve these problems. And I also think that Suella Bravman's article, even though she makes a few good points, quite a lot of it is very abrasive, mm -hmm. very poorly written, very poorly structured, and even worse, this is clearly nothing to do with her doing a better job and actually keeping people safe on our streets. It's all about her leadership ambitions, yes, and yeah. I think that yeah. is disgusting. And I think... also, we, we said yesterday, didn't we, we said about the fact that, you know, the problem is, we are where where we are right now when when tensions are inflamed and when we have actually moved on from uh, you know obviously from from the original appalling situation on October the seventh and we kept on saying we have to be careful with words we have to be really careful mm -hmm. not to actually make things worse we were talking about the difference between a ceasefire and a pause <clears throat> and saying we have to actually be a bit more careful and not just kind of go off going you know we need this or we demand that or or this is rubbish or they're not doing what, the thing. Or anything else. But what about Brahman? But I'm just well. I d don't you think that this feels like? I mean, this feels like f um, a, a government that has. Uh, I mean, there will be many people who are agreeing with what Harriet Holman said that it feels like he, uh, uh, Rishi Sunak's lost control, <laughs> and that Suella Brahman is stepping in, is coming in, and actually she's eyeing up being so leader of the opposition. Two, I, I say quickly. I spoke to two senior MPs today from the Tory Party. They seem to think that. Um, Bravman is not out of control. Sunak needs her right. as a blunt instrument and Lee Anderson because Very he's meek useful. and mild. They are speaking to a, a, a part of the country who Sunak can never win over. So actually, she's doing exactly what totally. Sunak is. So she's is the like attack dog. dog. Yes. She's and Very arguably, she can't, she can't be fired because then it exposes then him he's... even more. So, mm. And also, I it's mean, better to have him in place. Let's However, be clear, the vast majority of Tory voters will agree with pretty much everything that Suella yeah. Bravman has said. They will. How disappointing.